What's up, war gamers, friends of the internet, masters of the universe? We've got a new model coming out right now from Forge World that is for the Adeptus Custodes, actually the Legio Custodes, because it's only applicable to Warhammer 30,000, Warhammer 30K, or Horus Heresy, depending on depending on what you guys want to call that. So I'm a big Adeptus Custodes fan, Legio Custodes fan. I've done many videos on unbox and builds of the new plastic kits. I've got some more models on the shelf. I've got a couple more of the Forge World Dreadnoughts here to put together because I didn't like the way I painted the first set I got. So when they came out with the, the big guy, I bought two more of the other ones. Uh, I was dumb and I glued the shield on the Gladius Dreadnought sideways because I put the hand together before I figured out how it was going to go together and I couldn't break it apart without probably breaking the resin. So yeah, lesson lesson to be learned. So. Let's go ahead and get ready to dive in. Let's talk about what we're going to show you today. And we have got Constantin Valdor. Let's drag my... Oh, oh, oh. Do, 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 do. All right, so can't quite get my ugly mug out of the way. Just a second. There we go. So this model is maybe over the top. It's a little bit beautiful depending upon what you had in mind for Constantin Valdor. He is not the Primarch of the Legio Custodes. That you could argue that possibly that would be the Emperor himself that would be the Primarch of the Legio Custodes. But with Constantin Valdor, he is the Captain General of the Legio Custodes, much like the new Captain General Trajan Valoris, who 10,000 years later has taken supreme command of the 10,000 Fists. Um, but here we are. We've got quite a few things going on with him he's got one hell of a trophy rack on the model himself everything from a demon's head here on his shoulder a bird of some sort a techno raven attached over here um i would only hope that possibly what they could do for him is what they've done for like constantin valdor uh sorry what they've done for trajan valoris and with trajan valoris they seem to have heeded some of the PETA advice of making the fur optional so if you put together Trajan Valoris, you have the option of putting the lion's head on him and you could build the model otherwise without. I don't know if Forge World's going to quite do that. And I also don't know if PETA really has anything against demon heads, seeing as how they're mythological creatures, uh, fictional creatures. But I don't see any way to build him without it. Likewise, I also don't see any way to build him without any heavy conversion to not be on this massive base. But as we'll see in just a moment, we'll go over his stat lines in Horus Heresy, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Warhammer 30K, and show you what the Apollonian Spear does, which is his weapon there, what his stat line is like, and how he's basically a one-man wrecking machine as far as a humanoid type of character goes. So th let's get some more images here directly from Forge World, some close-ups. And you'll notice that the Forge World painters, especially with the Adeptus Custodes, the Legio Custodes, tend to not be quite as detailed as the heavy metal artists from Games Workshop. They're painted in quite a different style. They're not using non-metallic metals and things like that. Um, even here, right where you're seeing my magnifying glass, you could tell that there is what appears to be a fingerprint or thumbprint in the, the wash that was used there. So... Uh, they're still glorious models. I, I could say they probably paint slightly better than I do myself. And here he is in what appears to be the ruins of a Thousand Sons temple or a Thousand Sons uh, Emperor's Children uh, throne room, whatever you may call it. So he's got quite a bit of stuff going on on his base. We've got plenty of details from top to bottom on the model itself as well as the terrain surrounding him. And he comes... Uh, beautifully boxed in something quite um, quite spectacular for a, basically a $90 character. Uh, here's a little bit of that backstory. Constantin Valdor sits at the right hand of the Emperor as perhaps his most trusted companion and guardian, a watchman of inviolable purpose and all but unmatched fighting skill. Such in fact is Valdor's martial power and superhuman physical and mental abilities that there are those even within the Imperial Court who have in whispers called him Primarch in all but name. This is no doubt a disingenuous claim, as for all his power, Valdor was made and trained to serve a different and far more focused purpose, that of Lord Commander of the Custodian Guard, and to Valdor the petty concerns of conquest and glory, dominion and victory, are as nothing when compared to his own sworn duty. 
So you're going to get the 17 part model, which is going to be insane. Let's take a look now at his stat lines. I'd also like to commend some of the people who have recently joined the channel. We've been growing each and every video. So in the last couple days, or in the last day, there's been about five of you that have joined. I'd like to give a shout out to you guys. Sebastian Benars, thank you for joining. I am Hunya. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I appreciate it anyways. Thanks for subscribing along. Looks like you might be new to YouTube. Welcome to the channel. I'm glad I'm one of the first channels you subscribe to. Also, N. Stalky, Christopher Davidson, and I swear there's one more of you. Tom Herman, thank you guys. Chris Wells 777 If I haven't thanked you guys also, thanks for joining in. Now let's dive into the stats of Constantin Valdor here and see what we've got going on. So I'm pulling some screenshots from the book because it's easier to show you guys. This is from Fireden, who is take uh, is hosting an image on their website. So for 275 points, and if you're new to 40k, this type of stat line configuration was valid for everything from third edition all the way through seventh edition. Eighth edition is a bit different because weapon skill and ballistic skill work differently. There's also no initiative. But thinking back to how the things worked before 8th edition had come along, you have a weapon skill of 7, which pretty much means everyone's going to be hitting you on 5s. You'll be hitting everybody else um, on 2s and 3s. And ballistic skill of 5 means all of your shooting abilities. It's the equivalent of a 2 plus ballistic skill. So you're, you're only missing on 1s. A strength of 5 and a toughness of 5 is standard for anyone in the Legio Custodius or Custodian Guard. But five wounds was slightly more than average. Initiative of six, massively fast, meaning you're going to strike before most people. Five attacks, and that's before any bonuses. Leadership 10 and a two plus save. So he also has the other special abilities and special equipment. So he's got an iron halo for a four plus and vulnerable save. The Apollonian spear, which we're going to show you the stat line of here in a moment. Ari strikes, digital lasers, which gives him one extra attack. Custodian armor, so on and so forth. So... He's got Precision Strikes, Precision Shots, Counter-Attack, Crusader, Eternal Warrior, Inviable Psyche, so the Sodality. This guy is a wrecking ball, and he's not going anywhere. In fact, he may even stick around even when you thought you had just laid his final wound. So let's take a look at his special war gear and show you guys what we're taking a look at here. So the Apollonian Spear is a unique piece of war gear for this guy. So... Uh, Constantin Valdor is the only guy that has it. It says here that the Emperor himself once wielded it in his own hands. So this is different than the sword that uh, Robert Gulman, now of the Ultramarines, is carrying that was the Emperor's. This was the Emperor's spear at one point. And what it does is it gives him plus one strength at all times, plus two strength if he's charged that turn. So it bumps him up to strength six or seven meaning he's going to wound most people at all times on a 2+, plus, um, and even wound some heavier creatures on a 2+, plus on the turn that he charges. An armor-piercing value of 2. Armor-piercing obviously works different in Warhammer 30k, and in 7th edition and older editions. And it has lightning blows, molecular severance, it's a specialist weapon, and then in shooting it's got an 18-inch range, strength 5, AP 2, assault 2, and concussive. So... What you'd have to look up is things like lightning blows means for every roll of a six to hit in hand-to-hand -hand combat, this weapon generates another attack with the same weapon at the same initiative step. These do not generate further attacks themselves. Now, molecular severance is where you can end up hitting something like a hive tyrant or a demon prince or a bloodthirster and bring it down all in one strike. And that says any to wound roll on a four plus with this weapon inflicts instant death. Or in the case of a vehicle, causes a penetrating hit regardless of the target's armor value. And if you remember how damaging penetrating hits were, even when the hole points were introduced, but definitely before hole points became a factor, this guy could pretty much on a 50-50 chance on any of his 5 to 6 or 7 attacks that he's going to be bringing on a charge, on a 4+, plus, cutting people down, causing instant death, you're just taken from the table and that's that. In addition, any successful and vulnerable save made against wounds from this weapon, that means any wounds, not just wounds made on a 4+, must be re-rolled. So you're going after somebody that 
that has a four plus and vulnerable save, whether it's a company commander, a demon prince or something of that effect, an Eldar with some type of uh, four plus and vulnerable save, they're going to have to re-roll their successful and vulnerable saves on any wound caused by this weapon. They're already losing their armor save since it's two plus AP, and they're probably being wounded on a two plus or a three plus and hit on a three plus. So he's just going to slice through guys and monstrous creatures and everything left and right. His warlord trait, so of course you're going to take him as a warlord because you'd be silly to take him in a detachment or anything of that sort. Constantine Valdor carries with him the authority of Terra itself, and this means that if he's your warlord, you may reroll attempts to seize the initiative in missions where this is a factor. Um, and any Legio Custodes unit, including himself, may be given teleportation transponders at no extra cost. So normally that's a piece of war gear that could be given to your units. Now they all get it for free, so you're basically going to be able to deep strike with an entire army, um, plus or minus. So this is just going to be absolutely insane. So that's Constantin Valdor. Is he going to be worth the 85 90 US dollars to pick him up? If you're a serious collector like myself, absolutely, because you've probably already got almost everything. I don't have the Sagittarius Guard or the um, Horus Heresy Terminators that the Akion Terminators and things like that. So I'm missing three units currently, not including him yet since he's not out. But definitely pick out one of one of these models if you have a display piece like I do up here in the back. All this gold going on up here is my Legio Custodes. It's like 60 or 70 models and a couple more to go up there. I've still got five regular Custodian Guard that I may or may not put together because I've got way more of those than I need. And then I've got two more of the Dreadnoughts sitting here on the desk that I need to put together. And some more of my um, Death Corps of Krieg. I've got another unit of Grenadiers to toss together. So comment below what you guys think of it. Hit the like button if you've watched it this far. Do me a favor, hit the like button. It helps make sure that other people that are into Forge World and Warhammer 40k can help see this video. Especially if they're looking for information on Constantin Valdor. And look forward to hearing from you guys soon. We've got some more videos coming up. And we fully expect that come Friday night or Saturday morning, we'll have really good preview of what's going to be coming out in the following week. This weekend, we've got the two new boxes for Shadespire coming out. We've got Magor, and we've got the other um, Stormcast Eternal Warband for that. And then we've also got, of course, the Dark Eldar, new Codex, the strategy, or the um, yeah, the cards, and then the new uh, start collecting box coming out so stay tuned